Welcome to this uh, uh, 15-minute tech talk. So what we're going to do is I'm setting up, I'm going to try to do some shorter duration videos online. And this is the first uh, example of this, which is going to focus on a 30 kVA transformer picking primary and secondary overcurrent protective devices. Uh, we're going to pick the primary and secondary uh, conductors from a from an ampacity perspective and we are going to do that with 15 minutes on the clock so let's get to the PowerPoint all right so we are set up with our PowerPoint and our presentation mode and I am going to, over there in the corner, I am going to be putting 15 minutes on the clock. So here we go, we got 15 minutes. 30 kVA transformer. And this is the faceplate or the nameplate for the transformer. Everything that we need for this exercise, we can find on the, uh, the, the nameplate. We're gonna be referencing the 2020 version of the National Electrical Code. So that you see here. Um, so hopefully you have your, your code book out. I'm going to do is I'll, I'll reference as many sections as I can. But again, I've got 14 minutes left and we're going to select everything we need uh, for primary and secondary overcurrents and whatnot. So the first step, we have to understand the KVA. We're going to be, we know this is a 30 KVA transformer. We're, we've got that off of the nameplate. I need to know my voltages. We're going to see why this is going to be important as we move forward in this example so i know i have a 480 volt primary 208 volt uh secondary it's a delta y connection 208 120 on the secondary uh you'll be we'll just be focusing on the 480 volts phase to phase uh, uh voltage on the primary and 208 volts on the secondary now another important parameter that we'll find on the uh, nameplate is the percent impedance uh, in this case it's 5.3 percent you'll see where that's going to be important later on very at the end of this uh, session uh, when we start to understand available fault currents and interrupting ratings of overcurrent protective devices all right so this is our basic one line diagram that we have we have uh, a primary overcurrent protective device that's feeding the 30 kva transformer we're going to pick what size uh, uh, device that is we're also going to select the um, the conductor size for the primary uh, we're going to do the same thing on the secondary. Now, I show a secondary main overcurrent protected device because it's very rare that you are going to have a main lug only panel on the secondary of that transformer. And the reason is because it's very difficult to prove and meet all of the code requirements uh, where you have the primary overcurrent protected device providing the protection not only for the conductors on the secondary, but also the panel board on the secondary. So there's some requirements in 408 that makes it very difficult uh, for a main lug only panel on the secondary of that, uh, of that transformer. So this is the process. We're gonna calculate the full load amps uh, for both primary and secondary. We're going to apply the multiplying factors from the National Electrical Code uh, to those secondary and primary full load amp values to help us pick the size overcurrent protective device that we need. We're going to select each of the overcurrent protective devices, and then we're going to do some plotting on the time current characteristic curves to show you uh, how those trip curves relate to the inrush current and the damage uh, curves for the transformers. We are also going to establish the conductor ampacity that's needed, and then we're going to select those conductors based upon the conditions of use. All right, so these are our, our equations that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to need, uh, we have, this is the single phase and three phase. So we're, we can ignore the single phase because we already know we have a three phase transformer. So the equation we're going to be using for full load amps is uh, right there. And full load amps is KVA times the square root of three divided by three over KV. Now you've probably more familiar, familiar with seeing this equation as KVA over the square root of three divided by the kilovolts, because square root of three divided by square root of three is one over the square root of three. I throw, I do a little bit more detail just so I don't make mistakes. All right, so if I wanna calculate the full load amps on the secondary, I take the 30 kVA divided by three to get to a single phase kVA rating, divide that by the single phase voltage, which is uh, 
0.208, which 208 volts divided by 1,000. Divide that by square root of 3, puts it in the numerator. I have 83.27 amps on the secondary for the full load amps of that transformer. The primary, I have two ways I can calculate this. I can either calculate it as with the equation that I'm showing on the screen up above, or I can simply reflect the secondary uh, current that we just that we just calculated, 83.3 amps times 208 divided by 480, and that'll give me the primary full load amps of 36.08. You figure out what's what works for you. As long as you come out with 36.08, or I round that to 36.1 amps, or 36 amps on the primary, then you, um, you however you get there, you get there. So we've done step one, now we've got to do step two. If I look at 450.3b, I'm, 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 go I'm, I'm going to B because A uh, focuses on greater than 1,000 volts, B focuses on 1,000 volts and less. Uh, so I know I'm in, I'm in 450.3b, and I'm, I've already noted that I'm going to be doing primary and secondary protection. And this tells me that my primary maximum overcurrent protective device on the primary is 250% of the full load amps. And on secondary, it's 125% of the full load amps. So I've got my two multiplying factors to make my life easy. There's a note three in there, which talks about transformers equipped with coordinated thermal overload protection, blah, blah, blah. I've got a 30 kVA transformer. I can ignore note three. Don't have to worry about it. Now, if I do the math, 2.5 times 36.1 gives me 90.25. So my maximum size overcurrent protective device on the primary is going to be 90 amps. I, I can't go to the next, I can't go uh, any higher because of the way the language in 450.3b reads. I can't go higher than 90.25. So 90 amps is a standard ampere rating. Now, my minimum, the minimum is really going to be driven based upon the inrush current on the transformer. But typically we don't go to 250 right off the bat the only time i'm going to a 250 percent is if i have to selectively coordinate possibly through a transformer uh, in this case i'm uh, you know i'm just going to pick uh, i i can go around 125 percent which you would typically probably see a 45 amp uh, main overcurrent protective device uh, feed in this transformer uh, i think uh, i plotted both of these so i'll show you both a 45 and a 90. Now, uh, they, they coincide with the standard ampere ratings that we find in table 240.6. We can't forget chapter 2 and 240 overcurrent protection requirements. All right, so this is the FD90, which is a primary overcurrent protected device, primary circuit breaker feeding this transformer. You'll notice the inrush current uh, is highlighted there. I am, I'm not going to trip this breaker based upon inrush currents. And you see the damage curve, which is right there in the middle of that circuit breaker. This circuit breaker on the primary is there for short circuit protection of that transformer, and it does a pretty good job of it. Now, this is the 45 amp primary FD type breaker. You'll notice I still have clearance on that inrush current, so I'm not going to trip the breaker on inrush. I am a little bit closer. Uh, I feel comfortable with that inrush, uh, with that plot, and I provide very good adequate protection uh, for the damage curve of that transformer. So this is a fuse. Can't forget about the fuses. Uh, the the um, this is a 45 amp primary fuse. Again, I can go up to a 90 amp primary fuse. I did not plot that. Didn't see the need to do that. Um, there's my, and I have pr adequate protection of the transformer as well. And, and this is just a different type. This is an FRS class K5. Just, just reminds us that different fuses will have different trip curves and these are have an intended time delay involved. Uh, if I go to a fast acting type fuse, I may not live through that inrush current. So be mindful and select your fuses uh, properly. All right, so I've picked the primary overcurrent device. I'm, I can go to a 90 or a 45 and, and anywhere in between. Uh, and we've already shown that. So that's part of my uh, issue, or part of the uh, job that we need to get done. We got six minutes and 20 seconds left. All right, so now we're on the secondary overcurrent protective device. Uh, based on 450.3b, I know I can be at least 1.25 times the secondary full load amps, which is 83.3 amps, which is 104 amps. I know I can go to the next size higher, 
uh, because it says where 125% of this current does not correspond to a standard rating for a fuse, uh, uh, the next higher rating can be used which means I go back to table 240.6 and I can put a 110 amp circuit breaker on the secondary. I elected in this example to simply use a 100 amp panel board and a 100 amp overcurrent protective device in that, uh, in that panel. But again, be mindful that based upon that footnote, you could go up to 110. So um, with if I plot the curves for primary and secondary, I have a 90 amp primary circuit breaker. I have a 100 amp secondary circuit breaker. These are their time current characteristic curves. I don't have to worry about which one will trip first because if I trip either the primary or secondary, both of them, uh, the same load is removed. So no worries about coordinating the main, the primary breaker with the secondary main. You will have to selectively coordinate if that's on your agenda, which I have another video on my channel, which talks about selectively coordinating through a transformer. Not my job here, four minutes and 54 seconds left. Uh, so this is the 45 amp uh, primary. So I've lowered the primary breaker. And again, you'll see overlap in the curves, but who cares, right? I take them both out, I take one out, doesn't matter, I lose the same load. Uh, and, and that secondary breaker, which is the green one, doesn't have to worry about inrush current because that's on the primary. And these are my two fuses, 45 amp TCF fuse and a 45 amp, or 100 amp secondary, uh, secondary fuse. All right, so we've picked the primary and secondary circuit breakers and fuses, did both of those for you. And now we are looking at the conductors. So now we have to size the conductors. We can't forget about Article 240. 240 tells us how to properly protect to overcurrent protection for conductors. And you'll see, uh, and we're going to reference a special section in there for those secondary conductors, which are transformer secondary conductors. Those are not feeders. Those are not service conductors. Those are not branch circuits. Those are transformer secondary conductors governed by 240. We're going to leverage 310.16 for the primary overcurrent protective device. So if we go to 310.16, this is, um, we know that we have to, the ampacity has to be at least 90 amps. So we go to three table 310.16, and we know that uh, that would be a number three, which is good for 100 amps. I can't put a number four, which is 85 amps. I've got to stick with the, I can't go the next step higher. So I'm at 100 amps, and that's based on 240. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to go at a hundred amps to protect that 90 to protect that, uh, conductor. Actually. Yeah. Actually, I could go to an 85. I could go to a number four on the primary. So uh, I can go to the next higher. All right. So the conductor two, which is the secondary conductor, this see, these are transformer secondary conductors, not feeders. I have to leverage 310.16 again, which, uh, again, I have a hundred amps. I'm going to be at a number three conductor. And I've got to leverage 240.21C. And if we just look real quickly quickly at 240.21C, the title of that section is going to be Transformer Secondary Conductors. <clears throat> I said 240.21C. Uh, oh, I'm in 250. It helps to be in 240, not in 250, especially when you've got two minutes and 24 seconds left. All right, we're going to get this done. 240.21C is transformer secondary conductors. Uh, a set of conductors feeding a single load or each set of conductors feeding separate loads shall be permitted to be connected to a transformer secondary without overcurrent protection at the secondary is specified C1 through C6. And you have to go through all of those and be mindful of all of those requirements. And um, so I'm not going to read those to you. That is left to the student. So uh, over, the secondary conductor is going to be that, uh, I believe I picked a number two. Uh, number three. So number three or larger. All right, so now on that secondary conductor, I'm going to make sure my interrupting rings on the secondary breakers and primary breakers. So the, the primary side uh, overcurrent protective device I can't base any of my information from an interrupting rating perspective on the transformer. I'm going to be uh, looking at what's upstream, how are those, uh, how, what's the length of the conductor, what are my source uh, fault currents, and, and um, 
and how does that calculate down through the system? I, there's a lot of tools on the market. You can use things like SKM, EDSA, Easy Power. You could also use the Busman, uh, Eaton's Busman FC squared fault current calculator to estimate the amount of fault current at that uh, primary overcurrent protective device. On the secondary, I can leverage the infinite bus calculation. I could also model it using uh, my Eaton Busman FC squared uh, tool. Uh, so my full load amps uh, are for the secondary to calculate the maximum amount of fault current you could possibly see on the secondary of a transformer. I take the primary full load amps, divide that by the percent impedance, which in this case is 5.3 primary full or secondary full load amps is 83.3. Divide the 83.3 by 5.3, multiply that by 100 because percent impedance divided by 100 gets you per unit impedance, which that's another topic for another day. Never going to be in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And I know that the most fault current I can get on the secondary is 1,571 amps or 1,572 amps. My interrupting rating, any overcurrent protective device I pick on the secondary is going to be adequate. And we have completed selecting in 15 minutes. So hopefully that was helpful and you got something out of that one. And we did it in 15 minutes. All right. So that's my, this is my first layout with, um, with this program. And um, let's take a look on YouTube. All right, so we are good to go. Uh, I've got an excellent connection. I appreciate you tuning in on YouTube and on possibly Facebook. I can't, I don't know if anybody's seen it on Facebook, but we got it done in my allotted time. And I'm going to sign off. So thanks for stopping in. That was a 15-minute tech talk on 30 kVA transformers. Hopefully, you and you got something out of it. Please leave some comments. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be doing more of these. I've already got a uh, 75 kVA transformer lined up, and I got 112.5 kVA transformer lined up. If there's something that you want to see on transformers, let me know. I will make sure I include it. If there's some items you want me specifically to cover, please leave me some comments below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and uh, subscribe and click the bell so you get notified when I put more of these out on the system. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spending time with me. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you hopefully soon uh, with my new system here at the Technical Social Distancing Network. My name is Thomas Dimitrovich. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. And we are signing off.